Okay, so I, for this particular slide, I just wanted to spend a couple minutes uh, talking about final exam study strategy. Yes, some people have been asking me uh, for my opinion on how they should prepare for the final. And I would stress that this is only my opinion, um, just based on teaching experience, but I understand that everybody's uh, final exam preparation is subjective to their own, um, what works for them in a sense. Um, so I only want to highlight here what I would do if I were a student. Again, you take this with a pinch of salt and consider if this would work for you, but I'll try to highlight what I have here. So. Uh, for those of students who have seen me in office hours, I've probably uh, I've highlighted that I have first stressed to do a thorough analysis of the first two midterms, so that's sort of point one here. Um, so the first one is to figure out, uh, you want to figure out, you know, strengths and weaknesses from the first two midterms. What questions you're getting correct, what questions you're getting incorrect, and trying to identify any patterns or trends in the way you solve problems. So the more, so in a sense, it's assuming you're not, you know, you weren't, if you're not you know, happy with how things went in the first two, or you feel like you want to make improvements in the first two midterms, you have to first identify, um, you know, where the mistakes were made. To first, so in order, you want to first, the first, the first step in a sense is, a, is an identification of an issue, and then once you identify the issue, then you can go ahead and address it. So I would look at midterms one and two, look at the questions you possibly got wrong, and then look at the look at your work and compare it to the rubric. I tend to you know encourage students to categorize you know to, um, to place the questions that got incorrect into two categories. One because you got it incorrect because of a small error, uh, maybe missing a square root, and um, maybe misreading the question, uh, forgetting it's plus or minus, maybe treating a vector like a scalar. So in a sense where there's maybe there's four steps to a problem and you miss, you got three of them right but you missed the last one, versus problems in which you uh, you didn't understand the physics or you completely misinterpreted the question. So um, both obviously in a sense are, can be very costly, but um, I would sort of separate the, the two uh, into those two categories because the ones for sort of the slips and errors, you it, it's probably be reasonably clear that you understand the physics. So that can often come down to a exam performance uh, issue. So uh, identifying what types of errors you know that may have occurred due to possible exam pressure and those kind of things. And I would encourage you there to look at the exam videos that I made for the first midterm because I talk a lot about how you can sort of prepare yourself for an exam to address things like performance anxiety. Um, and then the second uh, category in which you didn't understand the physics, then try to identify which topics, which concepts, and then try to make an office hour or uh, to, uh, yeah, to contact me. Because um, in that particular case, you need to sit down either with a TA or you know myself to start to work through the physics concepts. That's a separate, how you address that particular error is much different how you address the previous error. So if it's a in, you know, if, it, if it's come down, you know, the question you got wrong because of silly errors, obviously you reviewed the physics, you probably have a much better grounding though in the physics, but also then consider things about how do you um, prepare for an actual exam, as I said, mentioned those prior videos. So once you do that, then um, I would then move to sort of listen to sort of higher to lower priority. This is, again, my own opinion. What you are trying, what you're going to the test or exam that you want to face is a 32 question exam, so you already know what the exam uh, looks like. So that's what you're preparing to do well on. So if I was a student, I would go, I would try again, try to mimic and practice what is closest, you, what, which would closely represent, you know, most closely represent what you actually get tested on, and that's the practice final exam. So if you haven't yet done all of that, that's, that would be my first priority done all the practice final exam and start uh, working on it. When you're working on the practice final exam, you can sort of link here to the exam strategy. So you're sort of beginning to look at, you know, you already know the number of questions, but you want to be looking at the number of questions per topic. They are arranged chronologically, sort of, so from scaling all the way to energy and collisions. But where's the breaks? Where's the breaks from old to new material? Um, 
where's your favorite topics, where's your least favorite topics, and are you coming up with a strategy, will I, will I tackle what's, you know, will I work from backwards because it's what we've done most recently, do I work from, you know, favorite, least favorite, these are all decisions you have to make, and that's all part of um, coming up with your exam strategy and how you're going to tackle the 32 questions. Um, yeah, and this this is basically the best best place to start. This uh, final exam review is part of this final exam review material, which consists of another 32 questions that are set up like a practice exam, but just I've written them in PowerPoint rather than an award document. Um, and I think the questions are all you know valid uh, exam questions. That gives you a bank of, in a sense, these are the two pieces of material that give you a, a sample of the exam questions on material examined post midterm two. So, uh, going from stress and strain, hooks all stress and strain, um, into momentum and into energy. So, these are your, your best two examples of what exam questions would look like in those new topics. So, kind of chapter eight through chapter ten. And then after that, and you can do this as a mix, you can sort of work again. These are all basically practice exams, and, and this is the you know, priority. So you should have four midterms per midterm. So that's four times 20, give you 80 questions. And there were also, there were also midterm one and midterm two material. So as I sort of note here, it's about a bank of 250-ish questions. That's a pretty sizable bank of exam questions. So if you're struggling, if you tackle the practice exam, final or the practice uh, final review material, and you start getting stuck on you know, Newton's laws or uh, connected objects or rotational kinematics, and it's been examined prior, I would encourage you to go back to those topics also in the midterm one or midterm two and start working, you know, maybe grouping your, your study by concept um, in it as well as this. Again, you can play around to suit your own uh, feel, but that's sort of what I'll be doing. Um, and then once you begin to get comfortable, you could then begin picking, you know, this is probably closer to the end of next week, which is the end of the quarter, and start picking questions at random. So you, know, you can you print these out. If you have a study partner, you can, again, just pick a question at random, like, you know, question 12 on a practice exam 2B, and give yourself a three minute timer in three minutes ish timer and see if you can uh, answer with just the equation sheet alone. So that's you want to be testing testing yourself again probably middle of the last week of the quarter and over the correctly over then the weekend uh, before the final. Making the, these that kind of test of where you can pick any question at random. You know and then when you see it you know the topic, you know what kind of equations you need, you know your uh, the concepts and you can perform uh, completed question successfully in the three to three minutes and 20 seconds and then um, your if you if you're comfortable with all of this material I would then begin to look at clicker questions and uh, particularly the ones labeled with the exam uh, exam questions or clicker questions that look like exam questions for sure they're definitely very valid and then after that the my lab of mastering homeworks and my lab of mastering practice assignments so in addition to this 260 questions there's obviously another uh, vast number of questions and clicker questions in my lab of mastering but these are, I prioritize these ones because particularly the ones you know the midterms that have actually been asked so you can actually see the kind of questions that uh, that have been asked uh, prior to have basically passed an exam review uh, process by your instructors and um, so they get the sort of the highest priority that's why I label these as highest priority and then you work down to uh, things that uh, are assigned with lower stakes in the sense the clicker questions are my level mastering but they're definitely the clicker questions are there to build you know the teaching of the concepts so and again if there was a particular concept inside of the practice exam and uh, you might go to the clicker question from that particular lecture so that's sort of another point I want to make here is that I tend to encourage students that your reading or your you know reviewing of clicker questions, whatever it happens to be, is motivated um, with the objective of answering an exam question. So I li I would like to this is why you know this is my again my my, don't, my opinion 
is that I would look at the practice exam material and keep doing questions and would find a question I cannot do and now I'm motivated to look uh, to the reading, look to the particular uh, lecture that had that concept, look to the clicker question so I'm not just studying uh, blindly, I'm actually reading with the purpose of answering an exam question which and you know is what is what you get examined on so I would be working from practice exams and using you know anytime you hit a roadblock here that then gives you the motivation to look towards the lecture questions look towards the my level mastering for uh, extra practice so that's sort of just a brief overview of how uh, you might arrange your final exam study for the um, next uh, you know, seven to ten days.